Hello, I'm Nicola Poussange. I will tell you about the anatomy and pathological cases of inguinal and femoral hernias. I would like to thank Quentin Monzani, from whom we were inspired for the diagrams. The muscular pectineal orifice is a zone of abdominal parietal weakness. It is a zone of weakness because at this place, there is a passage for the femoral vessels and for the spermatic cord and the round ligament. It is limited at the top by the union of the transversus and internal oblique muscles, internally by the rectus muscle of the abdomen, outside by the psoas, and downwards by the pectinus muscle. It is subdivided into three orifices, the inguinal ligament, stretched between the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic symphysis separates below. The crural orifice, which allows the femoral vessels to pass and, at the top, the inguinal orifice. This one is itself divided into two by the inferior epigastric artery, which separates outside the lateral inguinal orifice, which corresponds to the zone of passage of the inguinal canal and within the medial inguinal orifice. Anatomically, there is another structure to know. It is the transversalis fascia, here represented by the blue line. It is a facial membrane lining the deep plane of the transverse muscles and the superficial side of the peritoneal cavity. It's invaginating at the level of the deep inguinal orifice to form a sheath with the spermatic cord or the round ligament. It may be noted that within the epigastric vessels, between the deep inguinal orifice, the outlet of the canal and the right muscle of the abdomen, there is only this transversalis fascia, which constitutes a zone of weakness. Let's start with the femoral hernia represented here. It is located below the inguinal ligament and to identify and distinguish them from inguinal hernias, the essential marker ultrasound will be the femoral vein. Indeed, during dynamic valsiva maneuvers, the vein should normally expand, but if there is a femoral hernia, the vein will be squeezed by the hernia sac. For inguinal hernias located above the inguinal ligament, direct inguinal hernias should be distinguished from indirect inguinal hernias. To do this, the essential reference is the inferior epigastric artery, which is very easy to locate in ultrasound on the deep surface of the rectus muscle of the abdomen and which will delineate the two inguinal orifices. In the case of an indirect inguinal hernia, which is the most common hernia, the hernia lies outside these epigastric vessels. And if we take this diagram, we can see that outside the epigastric artery is located the deep inguinal orifice. And in indirect inguinal hernias, the peritoneal contents will pass through this deep inguinal orifice and enlarge it. In the case of a direct inguinal hernia, the hernia is located on the medial side of the epigastric vessels. This hernia is located outside the deep inguinal orifice, which is not dilated in an area of parietal weakness because essentially consisted of transversalis fascia. In direct inguinal hernias, the deep inguinal orifice is respected and the externalization of the peritoneal contents will be located on the medial face of epigastric artery, pushing back the transversalis fascia. In this context of perietal weakness, there is another entity that is not properly a hernia because it is an externalization of non-fatty epiloic tissue. This is the hernia of the sportsman or bulging. Some will talk about pre-hernia. It corresponds to the enlargement of the pre-peritoneal fatty space located in front of the transversalis fascia between the lateral face of the rectus abdominal muscle and the epigastric artery. 
In this context related to the symptomatology of pubalgia, we have to notice the presence of two small nerves. The genitofemoral and ilioinguinal nerves located just in front of this zone of weakness and possibly involved in the symptomatology. In ultrasound, the key point is the epigastric vessels. The epigastric vessels are located on the deep plane of the rectus abdomen's muscle and are followed to the ostium of the femoral vessel. On this ultrasound section, we can see on the right the rectus abdominis muscle, on the left the femoral and epigastric vessels, and in front the spermatic cord in men or the round ligament in women. We can also see a fatty recess between the rectus abdominis muscle and the epigastric vessels, which is non-epiloic fatty tissue, which will be involved in the hernia of the sportsman. On this ultrasound section, oriented downward and inward, we can see the inguinal ligament between the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic symphysis. The axis of the inguinal ligament corresponds on ultrasound to the axis of exploration of the femoral orifice. We find in depth the pectineal muscle and outside the femoral vessels. It is imperative to perform dynamic valsiva maneuvers to seek compression of the femoral vein, a key element in the femoral hernia. We can see all these elements on this video with the inguinal ligament on the surface, the pectineal muscle in depth and outwards the femoral vessels. During valsiva maneuvers, the femoral vein should normally dilate. Voici deux exemples de hernie fémorale avec en haut les coupes réalisées en position de repos et en bas les coupes réalisées lors de manœuvres de Valsalva. Vous pouvez voir qu'à gauche il existe une compression de la veine fémorale qui n'est pas dilatée comparativement à son aspect au repos et à droite il existe même un effacement complet de cette veine fémorale par le sac hernière. Another example of femoral hernia in movie with the key fact, the compression of femoral vein. ...de la hernie fémorale, à savoir l'écrasement de la veine fémorale par le sac hernier. Voici ici deux autres exemples de hernie. Here, two examples of indirect hernias with a hernial sac, whose path is located outside the epigastric vessels. ...suivant le trajet du cordon spermatique, ce que l'on peut voir sur l'image en bas à gauche. Voici présenté sur cette vidéo un exemple de hernia. In video, an example of an indirect hernia only seen while executing dynamic valsiva maneuvers. Du cordon spermatique en dehors des vaisseaux épigastriques. Un exemple ici en vidéo avec lors de l'effort de pousser abdominal. Another example of indirect hernia while executing valsiva maneuvers. The hernia is located outside the epigastric vessels et une réintégration incomplète lors du repos, donc une hernie incomplètement réductible. Un autre exemple de hernie inguinale. Another example of indirect hernia with a larger hernial bath. En avant de la paroi abdominale. Je vous ai essentiellement parlé des manœuvres de Valsalva pour mettre en évidence ces hernies. Concerning dynamic maneuvers, we can also request coughing efforts, which sometimes unmask hernias. Vous pouvez voir lors de l'effort de tout, en fait, un sac hernière qui va venir sortir après plusieurs efforts de tout sur la partie gauche de l'image. Another example of inguinal hernia only seen while coughing. Vous voyez le sac hernière qui sort le long des vaisseaux fémoraux. Ici, un autre exemple de hernie inguinale. Another example of inguinal hernia. On the right side, you can see the hernia located inside the epigastric vessels, which corresponds to a direct inguinal hernia et non dehors, et qu'il s'agit en conséquence d'une hernie inguinale directe. Ici, un deuxième exemple de hernie inguinale directe. In video, an example of direct hernia located inside the epigastric vessels. Le droit abdominal est à gauche de l'écran. Un dernier exemple de hernie inguinale. Another example of a direct inguinal hernia. We are at the beginning of the video, already in pushing effort. 
and we see during the rewinding the reintegration of the hernial bag. Here, an ultrasound section showing the hernia of the sportsman or bulging. It is a parietal weakness without exteriorization of epiloic fatty tissue with a simple bulge of prepiploic fatty tissue between the abdominal rectus and the epigastric vessels. This is not, I repeat, a direct inguinal hernia, despite the topography, because it is a prepiploic fatty tissue in front of the transversalis fascia marked here by blue arrows. We can see in video this enlargement of the fatty tissue between the rectus abdominis muscle and the epigastric vessels. In conclusion, ultrasound exploration of hernias is more difficult in theory than in practice. It is important to remember this key anatomical element, that is the epigastric vessels which will allow us to distinguish indirect inguinal hernias located outside from direct inguinal hernias located inside. The other essential point is the realization of a dynamic examination with mainly the valsiva maneuvers. Regarding the femoral hernia, which is much rarer, it is necessary to retain its axis of expiration downwards and inwards and a key element to look for, the compression of the femoral vein. Finally, the hernia of the sportsman that we will look for groin pain with exteriorization of a non-epiloic tissue between the rectus abdominis muscle and the epigastric vessels. Yeah.